Good morning guys, happy new year to you all, welcome to 2024. We're back out doing vlogs again. The idea today is to travel along this, the old disused knobby line, which is now a redway here in Milton Keynes, and look about, see what's around us. Some of the little quirky things that you could do with your family, possibly take the kids out to do a bit of exploring, etc. And it's just, it's free. That's the main thing, is you're getting out into the new year. It's a bit chilly, bit brisk. But anyway, guys, let's go and do this. So we're gonna start here. This is Great Linford Station on the old Nobby Line. I'll explain a bit more about why it's called the Nobby Line, or was called the Nobby Line, back in the day, shortly. But in that direction up there is Newport Pagnell, which did have a station long since removed. The two major remaining ones are the ones here at Great Linford and one further on at Bradwell. Now you would have had huts etc here. This would have been a platform and your big locomotive with probably six to eight carriages would have thundered through here for the age of steam and thunder. In some places some of these bridges have still got the old charcoal scorched ceiling. These places are nowadays synonymous with geotagging. Along here in the cracks and crevices, people will hide stuff. With a little notebook, you put your name, details, etc. and receive a little gift for your pleasure. Okay, this line that used to be here was called the Nobby Line, basically because of the conical shaped protrusion that come out of the engine. It's like a camel's hump in the middle really weird really peculiar there is a replica sitting outside of the milton king's museum because all the old ones were simply dismantled and destroyed which is really really sad as you guys will be able to see just the other side of the road there the difficulties the problems we're having early in 2024 with all the rivers overflowing into then the canals the lakes etc and there's just a huge abundance of water about that's going to take some serious getting rid of probably maybe still be around end of march time the ground is sloppy saturated boggy underfoot but yeah welcome to a new year the sky itself as we look out you find little patches of sun beyond the clouds but it really is dark and gloomy as we start now the knobby line continues down in this direction but we're going to just cut off here through black horse wood there, there is something significant like a pond area fountain area that belongs as part of linford manor it's just like um, a series of three little reservoirs but it's pretty cool the layout something spectacular to walk around this sort of time of year or any time of year to be honest with you we've got these rocks here that i guess at one point formed an adventure playground long since disused you can just see by the moss that's growing over the top of them I guess nowadays Kids don't have that sense of adventure, they pretty much do everything virtual, sit there and play games on the PS5, etc. Certainly wasn't like that back in my day. For those of you who have the keen interest in the spooky stuff that I do, I'll be back pretty much in this area on Tuesday night with Adventures of Paul. I've got a definite spooky tale I've turned around and spoke about during the daytime. It's basically a forbidden ghost. I'll go more into that on the night itself and give you the details, the name of the person involved, etc. What happened, why the events have happened and why this area. But it has got them eerie spooky vibes to it. It is just a small little thicket on the side of the link road between New Bradwell, Wolverton and Newport Pagnell. The reason why it's called Black 
Horse Wood is because the Black Horse Pub sits just behind that tree line over there. I was kind of expected this area here to be seriously flooded and underwater with what with its proximity to the canal if the water would have got to that and it would have overflown this would have been swamped but this is the third of three pools that I was mentioning the other two are the other side of the canal in Linford Manor itself but it is rather spectacular view from the top of them stairs over there I've done towels around this area before of a guy that was known as the rafting ginger he was pretty much an absolutely useless kind of highwayman but he didn't have a horse that used to frequent this area the road to the side of us basically mugging people and doing burglaries etc back in the day I think he was just that bad he kept getting caught and he would have eventually got hung but I believe he then emigrated to Canada and it became their problem. I kind of wonder if there's any fish in there. Obviously a possibility. They would have had to have been put in there because they're not going to swim through that little porthole over there. It's called the Cascade by the looks of it. As I said, it links up with two smaller poles which makes like a forms an explanation mark here you go you see we're here the other two poles at the other side of the canal all part of the once glorious Linford Manor we'll get to walk within the grounds of that shortly Yeah, pretty cool. If of course you like that sort of thing. So all of this entire area here, I said this shows you that kind of explanation mark shape of the ponds. This Linford Manor itself down there. It used to be, it's about a quarter of the size of what remains of what it used to be. I think it was the Pritchard family years and years ago that owned it doesn't own by them anymore it is someone more salubrious with the area nowadays you certainly feel them steps after walking up them there's not many of them but they are steep a proper big climb gets the old blood circulating this time of year an old relic I believe I've shown it before that is one of your half mile markers which obviously says it's half mile from the station that we've just walked from or perhaps half mile to the next one now I'd say that was probably half mile to Great Linford station from where we are standing here so our item in question which I've mentioned before goes back to a Victorian era now I've had some thoughts and views about it first I thought it was something then something else but that is specifically, I would say, either rail or horse and cart from maybe the 19th century, your late 1800s, etc. I first thought, you know, you get them, like comical things back in the day with someone either side of a platform pumping it along, going along the tracks with like a handle. Then I thought perhaps it's a bath chair, which is... Um, kind of Victorian wheelchair type thing but now look the wheels are just too large for that but it is old it's significantly old and no one has come out and got it maybe steam engine something like that maybe you guys know maybe you don't but if you do have any thoughts or views let us know in the comments it's got to be worth something for sure it's a real sturdy old bridge and it would have had to have been because these trains would have been in excess of probably 50, 60 tonnes at least.
I'm not going to venture up here too far, but just show you guys the expanse of the Grand Union Canal as it comes out, travels down that way, and will continue to wind its way up through Northamptonshire on towards Birmingham. And you go the other way through a series of locks, it will make its way through to Leighton Buzzard and continue its way down to London. I believe it comes out around Regent's Park area, the back of London Zoo. Here we go, here's one of our locomotives, the noisy neighbour. You see what I said about it being the knobby line? It's that hump there. That's what gave the line its distinctive name. Not everybody called it that, but it's the one that's sort of kind of stuck in everybody's memory. Now the line itself, I believe it was September the 5th. I'm just sort of going through my memory what I tried to remember last night. September the 5th, 1964 was the last passenger train that came through. The last goods train, if my memory serves me right, which I think it does because it all sort of culminates in this day. It'll make sense when I tell you anyway. That was the 22nd of May, 1967. Why that is significant to me is it is exactly one year before my sister was born. And on the day that I'm doing this vlog, the 6th of January, 2024 is exactly one year after the day of her sadly passing, her leaving us. So yeah, it's been a bit hard getting out there to do these sort of kind of things this time of year, but we will crack on and get on with it in her memory. And these stones come from an old stone quarry that is behind us, and to the back there is a prehistoric quarry. I'll make my way through that and show you. Yeah, they've made these sort of ornate circle stone area again for kids to hang around maybe have a picnic with the family etc but it's behind here that i find truly fascinating not many people know of it i suppose you have to really be a local to the area it is a bit boggy to get through i should have worn wellies which i purchased the other day but it's this area here this bank this is all prehistoric all this rock contains fossils, ammonites, etc. Possibly other sea creatures. You know, there's a, a huge find recently down on the Jurassic Coast. Well, there's no reason why this doesn't hide its own secrets because this would have been prehistoric times, the seabed. And all this rock hidden within that is all manner of fossils fossil shark teeth your larger creatures your small little minute ones but it's somewhere where perhaps ideally this time of year it's where it's being washed away with the torrential rain that we've had which might bring them to the the front possibly easier to view but of course it's sloppy, boggy underfoot. So maybe late spring, early summer, come along, a little trowel, little brush, etc., and give it a go, see what you can find. I've certainly found a few fossils down here in the past. There's a few squirrels play around in the wooded area. Wonder if any of those have made these little divots their home. But yeah, this is just pretty much ignored, I guess. People might come through here, walk the dog. And apart from that, nobody takes a blind bit of notice of what's in plain sight. I do have a friend, Steve. He used to live in the Leighton Buzzard area, now lives up north. He'd be all over this be able to tell me exactly what's hidden beneath it because of what the rock formation is etc there could be certain minerals as well wow this is boggy 
I will continue though, because there's something else I said about Ammonites, there's someone's sculpted one on this rock. So I can show you, you understand what I'm talking about. Right here guys, this bit here, these rocks are full of those guys. Obviously that is scaled up, there'll probably be the largest ones, well you don't know, they could be ones of that size, but the largest ones I expect to be 10% of that size. And someone's gone to all the effort to make all these carvings out. And it's simply passed by and ignored. So yeah, come and have a look. It could be very, very rewarding, spit me teeth out, and worthwhile. But anyway, let's get into the manor area. We'll not be frequenting that church you can see in the background there. I'll leave that for Tuesday night because our story and our spooky stuff is very significant with that. This is simply a lovely area to walk. See, that's where it forms its explanation mark with the pond that we looked around before, the other side of the canal. It ends up down here. And these old houses here, I believe at one point that was a school, but these were for the poor, paid for by the rich back in the day. Now just sitting here obsolete. Unfortunately, you can't sort of walk through and have a look at what's about. But perhaps look through the garden area. The old gravel path used to be a sign of money back in the day. Yeah, that's kind of cool, that. Would love to find myself getting in now, but I won't. At least not for now. Right, in front of us is the actual Linford Manor House. Once owned back in the day, I think it's 1700s by the Pritchard family. Um, I don't know whether they had something to do with Newton and Cowper, which were the slave traders in the area, but that was sold on many, many times over, and now is in the hands of one Pete Winkleman, who is the chairman of MK Dons. As far as I'm led to believe, whether that's changed recently, but last time I was here, he certainly owned this property, and it is pretty splendid. Have any of you guys ever heard of a Doric house? or a Doric seat. It's a kind of thing we've been to Stowe before and they're like, I suppose, Victorian, Elizabethan summer houses. There used to be one here. Over the years, it fell into disrepair. It was once used to keep the cattle warm during the winter months. And it sort of collapsed in on itself, got graffitied up, etc. And they've now sort of not repurposed it. They've made an illusion here to show you what it would have looked like. And there's a, a lime tree chair. Don't know the meaning of that. It's probably just some sort of sculpture. Around the corner here is where your Doric house would have sat. As I said, it's um, like a porch. Or it would have been like a porch very ornate back in the day and you can see what they've done is they've got the base the original base they've put these pillars up here and you come to this glass window and it will form what it looked like so here's a black and white picture of it here and now this is where the skill part comes in which i'm no good at whatsoever but there you have the frame. If I love it right. Well, anyway, so you get the idea of it. You form that, and that's a image of what it would have looked like back in the day. One seriously old lime tree. 
Not that I'm an expert on trees, of course. So they're saying this tree is between 300 to 450 years old. Interesting. We have ourselves a plethora of ducks playing about in the water and it looks like a pair of nesting swans. And this is a point where you get to go under this very old lime tree and you can touch it because it's right above us. Look at these guys, aren't they beautiful? A couple of nesting swans. Oh yeah. Don't worry about us, we ain't going to do you any harm. They're huge. Very graceful. I'm going to leave them in peace because we don't want to disturb them if they're making a nest. We do the craziest of things. It is boggy underfoot, but with a new year and certainly wanting some luck this year, we're going to go through this horseshoe because they believe it brings you luck. So, right, she's saying her feet are wet, but we've got to do this. Okay, good luck to us and everybody in 2024. Don't forget to duck your head because that wouldn't be good luck, would it? There you go, good luck for 2024. Boggy. Right guys, you have heard of the famous concrete cows, but have you heard of Milton Keynes' infamous wooden sheep? I first at one point thought they were plastic, but they're wooden sculptured sheep. Hi guys, what you doing? This little area here, adjacent to the rugby and football ground of Bradville, or Bradwell. I've never worked this out. Is it Bradwell or Bradville? There's two of them in close proximity. It's Bradwell Station, I'm pretty sure of it, which we've got to finish off at just below us to the left down there. But this here, the Bradwell Windmill, is reportedly, as I've done in the spooky vlogs at night, the most haunted place in all of Milton Keynes and it comes back to a time of an incident I believe it was the would be the flower makers daughter etc she had two love interests um, one of them killed the other one I don't know how that come about but then the other one was so full of remorse that he killed himself and then I believe the daughter killed herself. So it's pretty tragic circumstances. And I believe it's her ghost that frequents the bottom of this windmill area here. How true that is, who knows? We can only come to our own conclusions. There are a lot of things of tales and etc. But a story is supposed to have happened. I suppose like anything else. Stories get mixed up over the years. Some people turn around and say the time frame that the windmill might not even have been here when it happened. But regardless, it's very, very stunning. Probably the oldest in the region and probably one of the oldest in the country. Unfortunately, the old plinth that would have sat here, like many other things in Milton Keynes, has sadly been stolen. But it does work. You can go in there very rarely nowadays and they will show you how they made the flour from corn. See one of your stones here, grinding stones to grind corn, flour, etc. They make bread. And that's a sad sight. This is probably to do with the, the strong winds we've had. I'm not going to take it as a souvenir because that's not on, but that there it's part of that, that unfortunately our strong storms that we've had recently 
has torn it apart. Door there locked for safety reasons. How sad's that though? Part of the, the blades ripped off by the recent storms. Right, let's go and finish off where we started on the knobby line itself. Right, so we'll finish off with the second of the stations. We could obviously go further. If I pan round and look further behind me, it branches out down towards Old Wolverton. It would join a track which would have made its way down to Bletchley. And that line would have continued. It didn't go any further than Bletchley, this train didn't. Um, but it made its way round. Similar, in fact, to if anyone's ever been on the line that goes to Bedford from Bletchley. It's that sort of single track train that used to frequent and come down here. But even now, thinking about a steam locomotive ploughing its way. This is a bit of an incline, a bit of a hill. Powering its way up here towards Newport Pagnell. Seems hard to believe. I've only ever known it as a redway. And I was just fortunate enough that I heard about this last year. Otherwise it just would have gone unnoticed by myself. And probably many others. But this is where the platform area would have been. There would have been a hut sitting on the side there. Where people could have sat and waited for the train. Many kids... Probably not kids now, obviously. Probably a lot, lot older. Maybe in their 70s, possibly 80s, would remember this old line. Probably enjoyed going on this line if they lived in any of these locations where the stops were up to Newport Pagnell. But I said, further down in that direction, it would have ended up Wolverton itself. You've got where the Bill Billings Memorial is and the secret garden that's further on from there but this is just an old relic and it's been good to see it the fact that it was i believe it's 18 is it 1867 i have to check on that yeah it was certainly 1867 and as i said passengers went through to 1964 which this year's this year is 60 years ago and then from then on the last train that came through on what would have been exactly a year before my sister's birthday on the 22nd of May 1967 and all gone I think unfortunately things have been torn off from here sad really this doesn't really have any plaques, mottos or whatever I suppose they're a collector's item unfortunately so people will come along and say i'm having that but all these banks all predate every single house in the area anyway guys that's going to do it for today's vlog certainly hope you enjoyed it it was just one of them this get out blow the cobwebs out start the new year said the significance of this day for me i'm still i know still very upset about the whole situation the fact that it's exactly a year ago today that me sister sadly passed so we're getting past that but i have to blow the cobwebs out and get these vlogs going otherwise you sit back and they never happen uh, i'm not sure about next week yet what we're going to do i have got ideas plans is just placing them all together when to do them when to go out film them etc obviously for those of you who watch what i do with adventures of paul on a tuesday night that is coming on Tuesday the 9th next week. But from myself and Rachel, thank you so much for joining us. As I said before, Happy New Year to you all. I hope 2024 brings you many great surprises, good health, good wealth, etc, etc, and so on. I've said so much, but yeah, I've said so little. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the movies. Bye for now. Bye.